Okay, so we're recording now. My next topic for you guys is our changes to the syllabus. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Rasil. Yeah. I think you will have a lot to share. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I will go through our syllabus. So this is for its four syllabus. As I've mentioned um, in email to you guys, um, I've consulted with Dr. Lemmy, who uh, designed this course. And I, uh, and I mentioned to him that a lot of you guys know programming, but there are some of you who um, are still um, are still like starting up. Um, so we created, we decided to uh, extend the, the project from a half a semester project to a full semester project. And I will discuss with you the impact, okay? So for um, the course objectives, um, the AI chat will not be able to do that. I will give you materials on that uh, for independent study. And of those, for those of you who get uh, uh, a good grade here, if you get an A here uh, and you want to further study this, tell me. Uh, I will refer you to Dr. Elimi. Um, he has a lot of AI-related um, study. And you can be like a research assistant or, or you can do an independent study with him. Okay? So uh, then I removed the, the requirement for, for chat GBT registration. And then there will be now a semester project instead of a project one and a project two. Instead of the project being 60% um, of your grade, like 30 and 30, we, uh, we made it 50%, right? The actual submission of the project. But uh, the teach ones and the assignments will be the other 50%. There will still be no exams. Why? Because we have designed this course so that when you do the assignments, when you do the teach once, you will be able to create a good project, right? Like, right. And then it will just be um, your analysis of it that will get you a high grade, right? But, but we designed it that every week we work on things that, that gets you a step towards finishing your project so that no one uh, does everything in the last week, okay? So, and there's course the course schedule, we uh, extended it. Um, so, this is still intact. So, January 1 to today, still intact. But the other um, portions of the of the project we will spread out until week 13. If you remember, we still have a topic on week 14 before. Um, so week 14 and week 15 will be project presentation days. Okay. And uh, week 16 will just be a project submission deadline. So that this means that you can do a presentation even without submitting your project. Um, because there might be some um, things that you um, that you learn during presentation uh, or feedback from me, uh, and then you can do you can revise your submission um, for for those feedback. Okay. So that being said, that means this time everyone will be will need to present their project. So unlike before, when we have um, uh, a sem two semester pro two projects. I was thinking that only 
half of the classroom present project one and the other half will present project two. Now, everyone will present the, their findings. Okay. Okay, and the last, so this change in the schedule, of course, affected our teach ones. Okay. So I try, so the green here is things that are done. Okay. So I tried to maintain what week you signed up for. So the early before you, you signed up for the week, for a specific week for your teach one, it's either you get the same week or a later week, right? I think, except for the uh, writing um, assignments, because we won't have results um, until week 12, we spread out everything. So that's the only time, week 12 will be the only time that we will be able to write our method section. And week 13 will be the only time that we will be able to write our uh, results and discussion section. Okay. So Leia, um, you were moved way down. And of course, Johnny and Camilla, you were, were moved way down the line uh, for your teach one. Um, so, and Mukadas, before signed up for week 14, you will be moved up to week 13 because that's our last week. And everything else, I think, is the same week. Okay. Uh, again, we spread out instead of just one line item for, for example, creating a database, we spread it out into three weeks. Um, I showed Brazil and Mona my code um, when I was teaching, when I was preparing them for Teach One. Like, yeah, it's getting really fun. <laughs> it's getting really fun. And so we wanted you to really learn and absorb how um, these codes are being done. Okay. Okay. So. So. Let's go on. Are there, before I move on, are there any questions? Yeah. Let me, yeah. So for the presentation, okay, uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, so everyone, um, there was a question given to me. Is the presentation, um, the final presentation, can it be recorded? Um, the answer is um, you can um, you can create a YouTube video similar to a Teach One. Okay, uh, actually that's the preferred way, and then we will upload it into our Blackboard um, so that everyone will have access to your recordings. But um, there's no partner. Oh no! So the part yeah, actually the presentation is individual. Um, so you will have, for example, there are two persons for the topics, right? So you're, there will be two persons, for example, where, where is that? I have a lot of things happening. There are two persons um, signed up, for example, for group for Payan, right? Johnny and Amy, for example, but they are not group mates. They are, um, they are actually just they ha just have the same topics because we're limited we only have um 15 possible topics okay so and you are 25 so some of the topics will be doubled so johnny and amy for example will both be reporting with papayan they will uh they can work with each other, right? But they will present separately, okay? Because there might be insights that Johnny have that we can learn from that Amy does not. And Amy might have her own insights that Johnny does not, okay? And it's good to learn from people. And it's also, as an analyst, if you're looking to become analysts, uh, learning how to present, how to communicate technical findings, uh, is very it's a very good practice yeah 
Okay. Any other questions before I proceed? I think you will have the same results. <laughs> Why? Because I will. we will be teaching you, so me and the Teach One people, um, every step of the way. Um, if we go to the schedule, go to the schedule, we will have, we will have the same things, we will do the same things up to probably week, week six, right? And then week seven onwards, the only difference will be the antidepressant. So we will do likelihood ratios, for example, in data cleaning. I will clean it in my demo um, for a bit triptyline, right? And probably Sakwanda. Sakwanda is doing it for fluoxetine. Okay? And Anne. I will be doing it for the the loxetine, okay? So you will just have to tweak your code a bit so that it will work for your own antidepressant. Um, but yeah, up to like week six, we'll be doing, everyone will be doing the same thing. Um, up to week six, it's not antidepressant specific what we're doing. Um, and then uh, week seven will be yeah, like antidepressant specific. Let's see. So you will probably have the same results, right? But you will have different ways of presenting your results, I think. Yeah, it will, uh, different people will have different ways of understanding things, of presenting things, right? And it's a good way to learn from other people. Okay. Yeah, working together is also part of our um, training, right? In, in industry, this is really a practical subject. Um, I'm really pulling from my industry um, work. Um, in industry, you don't work alone. <laughs> the solving complex projects takes teams. So yeah, working with, but you will have to present by yourself. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so just a recap. Last time, uh, we covered creation of the cohorts, creation of the concept sets, and creation of the data sets. Okay, um, so I did it um, as a lecture. And your classmates, very good classmates, Mona and Rasil, also did, did teach once for the same topics. Okay. Um, I said I recommended that you watch those videos before this session so that because that will be our topic for our lab session. Okay. So what we will do is every time I will teach, um, I will cover, we will cover each topic twice. Okay. I will I will teach it and then a teach one person will help simplify it for you. We'll upload a very a simplified um, video. Which you can just follow, okay? And so, yeah, you'll have like up to three different perspectives for the same topic. Yeah. And then today, we will discuss data preparation concepts, and we will start our data preparation of the demographics, survival, and antidepressants data set. Um, and then we will break up into lab sessions. In the lab sessions, um, you will work on the assignment. So the assignment actually will be affected as well. I sorry, I forgot to show you. Will be affected as well. So the assignments, I'm still not done with it. But for example, um, your week two assignment is still the same, but your week three assignment uh, will change. So you will. Your assignments will be based on what I put into a Blackboard from now on until we have to, until we update the site because we spread out the assignments, right? So instead of you creating 300 lines of code by, by next week, we'll probably just do three. I know, I'll check, I'll check. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, so for example, we, the, this assignment still, this is the, still the same prompt, complete the abstract and provide evidence of all of us um, so registration. But next week, instead of just create a database, it will be uh, creating your cohorts, right? Importing the codes and renaming all the variables, just like what Brazil and Mona did. Okay. And then we will rate the teach one videos. Okay. So you can do that now, but I suggest wait until the lab sessions are done because um, go to the discussion board, go to the teach one video. So for example, Brazil, and you can rate them from one to five stars. Right? Not just on the Teach One videos, but how helpful they are during the lab sessions. So they will be going around the different rooms with me. Okay. So that's how we, uh, yeah, this course is about helping each other. Um, and then, and then we will stop maybe 30, uh, 30 minutes before the class and um, so 930 so that I can use 30 minutes of time to prepare the next teach one people which are who are who are Lana and Shatrini. Yeah so the creating database assignment will be due next uh, next week yeah Tuesday. Yeah. So you have always one week. And I chopped it up so it will be doable in one week. Okay. Okay. So my question, now that we have created the data sets, right? Uh, um, Marcio and Mona showed you how to create the data sets um, into it from all of us. Um, what are the next steps? So. Can we do the analysis right away? Why or why not? So yeah, anyone can raise their hand. Uh, there's no right and wrong answers. People, I will note down who raised their hand. I'll give them plus five points in the assignment. <laughs> okay, hey, Johnny. Uh, I believe if you already have the data sets, you can analyze it. You could the effectiveness of each drugs or whatever uh, drug you're selected. Okay. Uh, great. Um, Lana, thank you for that. Um, Johnny, um, Lana. I might have to disagree. Uh, I feel like after the data set, we have to like perform the actual study and then we can analyze it. Okay, uh, study first, right? Uh, study first. Okay. Um, okay, last one. So I think who raised their hand? Um, Ikra? Um, I think that if you have the data set, then you can um, analyze it in terms of like noticing a trend depending on like what your data sets are. And then you can come to like a, like not a whole conclusion, but you can at least like notice a trend within the data sets. Like that's a sort of analysis. Okay. They are, um, so thank you. Um, you can uh, lower your hands now. Um, yeah. So thank you, um, Johnny, Lana, and Ikra um, for those, um, for those responses. Okay. Um, so, so Johnny said that we can already do it, right? He's, he can be correct at some data sets, right? Um, but probably not in this data set. Um, and I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, Lana said that we have to study first. Um, so you were getting there, Ikra was, have part of the answer, which is trend analysis. That's what I got, right? You check, check association patterns in the data first. Um, so that's also in the right path. Thank you for being brave to um, speak out. Uh, again, 
uh, again, sometimes the data is clean, right? The data is prepared and it's clean enough and you can just analyze it, right? Especially if, um, for example, uh, you're doing very simple analysis such as how many people um, got, uh, was readmitted to our hospital last week, right? Like, like a dashboard type of report. Probably easy enough to, to, to create. However, at, for this particular project, we're creating complex analysis that at, for our first design required four different tables. Okay? It requires four different tables. So we need to have a way, just like in SQL, to merge those tables, right? We need to have a way to prepare those tables for analysis so that they will produce reliable results. Uh, we have to identify patterns. Uh, that's just like Itra said, identify patterns. That's what data profiling is or exploratory data analysis. So we can see, are there relationships between data, the data, are there relationships between the different tables and then fix issues before they affect our outcomes. So that's what data cleaning is, right? Are there missing values? Are there inaccurate values? Are there duplicate values? Okay. Um, are there wrong formatted values? Okay. Not for, for maybe not in this data set, but it can happen in other data sets. Okay. Uh, we also want to structure the data uh, to make more effective use of our resources and reduce costs. So for example, uh, we imported four tables and half of the information for those tables are not relevant, right? So we can merge data um, together so and reduce the size of the table and that will reduce our um, resource requirements. And usually in computing that relates to cost, right? The higher, the bigger the data, the bigger the computer that you will need, the bigger, the bigger server you need, and that bigger servers have bigger dollar signs attached to them, okay? Uh, and then finally, we might want to do validation steps so that we know that we are complying to the data quality st standards, right? We check if we have the right methods, we have the right setup, uh, and most importantly, that we comply to regulations such as data privacy or HIPAA, uh, okay? I will uh, upload this. Um, everything that I sent to you guys will be uploaded in Blackboard, and it will also be shared um, in the Open Online Courses um, website, right? So that you can refer to it even after this class. Maybe you're already um, one year up, one year outside of this course uh, after this course you can go back to open online courses so, but i am not the administrator of that site so there might be some delays so i will upload in blackboard and then it will be uploaded in to the site um, as we finish uh, as it gets done by the administrator who is dr lemmy dr lemmy has a lot of things he does including managing that site um okay so great job guys so again um sometimes it's easy um data sets are ready for analysis just like Don, donnie said but there are times that we need to do a bit more work and particularly in more advanced research or analysis um, and you're doing data, uh, you're, you're already in public health, epidemiology, bioinformatics, or as a data analyst, as an informaticist, right? Most of the data sets will be huge. Um, and actually preparing the data takes 90% of your time. Um, analyzing the data will probably just be uh, a few lines of code, maybe less than 10 lines of code, and you can do the analysis but there's like a few hundred lines of code just to prepare the data. Okay, so 
we will cut up um, cut up the work that we will do into chunks um, just to make it manageable and you can submit uh, assignments on week on week and track and really understand them right and of course uh, we can have um, teach ones that are short enough like um, like less than 15 minutes each uh, and that you can really understand as well okay so this is not the entire design of what we will do the entire design of what we will do is in the project page and in, uh, in open online courses but this is um what we will do today so the first one is uh, we have the demographics data and the and we have the several data right we only needed um date of death from the survival data so it might and then and then we don't need it anymore right so the first step the so that we can get our juices up and running and coding is probably we can just combine the demographics okay. data and the survival data and create a new data set person characteristics that means um, we don't need survival data set anymore because this single table will contain both the demographics and where if and if the person is dead the, the his date of death okay and then um we will have to process the antidepressant data set okay and the first few steps that we will do to uh, to process that antidepressant data set is we have to group similar antidepressants so if you see uh, we will explore the data later and you will see that for amitriptyline, there's different ways of coding amitriptyline. So there's amitriptyline 10 milligrams, amitriptyline 50 milligrams, like that. oral amitriptyline. Okay. So we have to group similar antidepressants together. Um, otherwise, um, we will have a too detailed of a de data to create the insights. Um, the outcomes, the research outcomes that we have. So we have to generalize it further instead of being more detailed. Okay. Remove any un unneeded columns, right? Um, things that we will not use anymore in the analysis. If there are duplicate data, we have to remove them. Okay. And then based on the project page, we have to create um our unit of analysis okay unit of analysis is actually the antidepressant and not the person okay so that means we are more interested in the antidepressant right than the patient or the person taking the antidepressant so what we will do to fulfill that requirement of the design is we will create a new data set, okay? Um, and there, there's the primary key, which you learn in SQL, will not be person ID. It will also not be antidepressant because each person can take several antidepressants, but the combination of person ID and antidepressant can be our primary key, okay? Any unique combination of person and antidepressant, then that should be that should be a primary key or a single row in our data set, okay? So we will create this new data set. Um, and using that new data set, we will process the antidepressant dates, okay? So I will not do lab breakout yet. Um, so this is what we will do. So again, sign in to all of us. Go to your workspace. We'll proceed to the analysis page. And I have a prep, just like a good cooking show, I have everything's been cooked beforehand. Um, I don't wanna like, um, 
like do experiments in front of you that will be a waste of time. Um, so we have prepared um, the code. I will share this code with the Teach One participants, at least for the section that they will be doing. Uh, but now I'm also sharing it with you. It takes about it takes a while. Um, okay. Maybe I'll try to push it a bit. Mm -hmm. I'll try to set up edit again. Okay. It's There you go. Okay, I'll try to zoom it in. 150% will do. Okay. I hope I'll, I'll put it back to 125%. There you go. So this is the code that I've done. Okay. Um, this, this is similar to what um, Mona's shown you. Okay. Except that these automatic, automatically generated codes will be different for all of us. Um, but to standardize everything, we will use standardized data frames. So in your lab, you have to get up to here. And that's if you got get got onto, until here, and then you're good to go. That's your assignment. You can, you can submit that, OK? So first, I hope you can see my screen. Tell me if you can't. I'll try to zoom it in one more. Yeah, OK. Maybe that's better, OK? So the first step in our design was to create a new person um, data frame, right? With, which will combine the demographics and the death, date of death together, OK? So um, first is we have that DF. I wanted to re rename observation time to date of death. Okay, uh, and then I use left child. So in SQL, what this will do is that I will retain the demographics on the left, so all the data of demographics, and if they're dead, then add, then just add their date of death, right? And that will, that's it. That's our first step. We will create our person data frame with a date of death. Okay? Simple enough. So, okay, now we have to group antidepressants together, okay? To do that, um, we need to, for example, look at all the unique antidepressants in the, in the on, um, all the unique antidepressants in, in the data set, right? And try to group them. I did it by hand, so you don't have to, okay? And I think it was uploaded, so I'll go to open online courses. If it's not secure, I'll go to a different browser. There you go. So you go here, organizing antidepressants. So I created a CSV file. CSV file. So this is the standard code, um, standard code concept ID. 
this is what it means and this is the grouping okay so that means there are these many definitions for doxypan okay but they're all doxypan right there are a lot of uh, some ploxetan some sadhara plan something like that so i already manually uh, manually uh, made that so that you don't have to okay you just have to download that data set okay and access it in uh, all of us how do you do that okay how do you upload a file into all of us you click on file you click on file you click on open and it will it will show your workspace file um, site okay by default there are no folders okay by default there are no folders i you can put your data here right if you want to create a folder it's easy enough you can just create new and then folder right my standard is always just to create a data folder so i when I create a new folder, I just rename it. So I already have a data folder. Maybe I'll make it make name it name it data two. Okay, I'll rename. I'll go to that folder. Click on upload. Just say okay. And then upload the file, right? So this is the file. I'll upload that. Click upload. So now you can access it just like you when you upload your own a data from your own computer in in uh, Python. So you read the CSV. You use read the pandas um, read CSV uh, function. Okay, so it's it's in the current file system. That's dot right, and then the folder is data two. And then you need group CSV, and then it will read that data. Okay, it will read that CSV file. Now again, for uh, five points on the assignment, <laughs> um, um, if you have this table, how can you group? How can you use this table? What are the ways that you will do to use this table and group? Um, the bigger antidepressants data frame. Just to show you the antidepressants data frame looks like this, right? So this is the antidepressant data frame. What we need to do is add a column here for grouping, right? And it should group based on based on um, that that file that we had just now. Any takers? going going gone okay <laughs> um yeah so you can a trick that i usually do is use left join okay you see this standard concept code right it's a key of a uh, foreign key a foreign key of the same standard concept code here these are the same so if I see the same standard concept code, right, I can just add the value of the grouping column, AD grouping for antidepressant, AD for antidepressant, right? I can use left join, okay? I will left join. I will left join based on standard concept code, right? Left join on standard concept code and use AD grouping as, uh, retain AD grouping as the only column that we will want to um, add to the left join. By doing that, we have effectively grouped the antidepressants. This amitriptyline, the AD grouping should be amitriptyline, which is correct, right? This, uh, the L'Occitane is grouped correctly as well, right? Now that we have this, we really don't need the standard concept name and standard concept code, right? We will only be using this, this AD grouping because this is what we're studying. We're not studying 
a multiplane 70 millifive milligram tablet, right? We are not we are not that, um, studying the duloxetine 40 milligram capsule. We're studying the actual antidepressant um, substance, amitriptyline or duloxetine. Okay. So we can drop the standard concept name and the standard concept code. Okay. Right? Again, that's optimizing our data set. Okay, so now we only have a person ID, the drug exposure time and start time and start date. Okay, we did download this verbatim end date and refills. Your data set will only have day supply. So these three columns, we did download that verbatim and refills and quantity, right? I learned that they are not useful after um, analysis, but I wanted to just put uh, drop these two columns in the code because that is the only columns that you will drop in your own data set, okay? You will not have these three big columns in your data set if you follow uh, Brazil and Mona, okay? And now let's see the number of participants, um, unique persons taking antidepressants so that, uh, so that uh, we know. So out of the 9,400 people in our cohort who are African-Americans with major depression and without bipolar disorder, only 7,081 of them are taking antidepressants. I wonder what others are taking. Okay. okay. Um, the next part is optional. Um, I will not use that. Um, this is a code. If you want to do an analysis of uh, all the antidepressants, uh, right? But it's optional. Um, you just have to like create a list or create a dictionary so that you can loop through the different antidepressants and repeat um, all of your analysis. This is not something that we will do. Tell me if you're interested in that so I can share with you the code. One second. Okay. Um, now, Now we will fill out antidepressant dates. Okay. So we need the start date, the end date, and the dosage days. Okay. Why? Because sometimes the start date, the end date, and the dosage dates do not match up. So for example, my um my prescription is starting um from January 1 until January 31. So that should be 31 days, but I only have 15 dosage days, right? Because I only take, for example, uh, it every other day. I only take my antidepressant every other day. So the dosage days is really critical. Um, and then you will see from, from this, um, when you explore this further, so I only here we're only sh looking at the first five um, rows, right? But if, for example, if we explore um, this group data frame, right? So let me just put that in this group data frame, um, where where group data frame that person ID is equal to this guy, this guy, right? I inspect that. Oh, yeah, I haven't run it. So if we inspect that, I need to run everything from this beginning. Okay. So I haven't done that. So cell run all above, but it will take time. I think. Yeah. So if I inspect that, we will see that sometimes that sometimes um, there's a gap, right? The drug started and ended and then 
it will have a bit of a gap and then it will start again. Okay. So um, for the research, we're looking at if the drug um, start, stopped and started less than four weeks, if the gap is bit, um, less than four weeks, then it's just a random non-compliance, right? You just forgot to fill your prescription. You forgot to um, probably go to um, ask the doctor for a more for a prescription. Um, so it's just random non-compliance. But if it's beyond four weeks, then it's really um, you really stop taking the antidepressant, right? If it's more than four weeks, you stop taking the antidepressant. If it's less than two week, four weeks, it's just non-compliance or non-adherence, non-adherence. And that will allow us to comp to calculate trials on the antidepressant. So you started it and you stopped it. That's one trial. You started it again and you stopped it again. So that's another trial. You started it again and stopped it again. That's another trial. We are looking at up to three trials for this study. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm done. Move duplicate road, I'm done with that. So, and then this one. So, here as we can see um, this is all, all, all the data for that person, right? There will be times when it start it, it started 2018, 2015, and then it stopped and started again um, 2019. Okay. So yeah, you will see these patterns. That this is called beta exploration, same as what Ikra said, right? So look at trends in the data. Okay. I'll delete this portion of the code. I don't need that. Okay, now this process only allows for three trials, right? So if you have four trials, five trials, we won't get, we won't be able to handle the next few trials. You know, we can do that, but not, not part of the scope of this, um, this requirement, okay? I just wanted to first remove duplicates before we do this, okay? We wanted to make sure that we are processing the smallest possible table um, the smallest possible table and it will make our um, resource um, requirements lower. Okay, so before before we ran um, this removing of duplicates, we saw that there's over 213,000 rows. Okay, so we remove the duplicates. How do we define duplicates? So we use um, we use person ID, drug exposure start start time, person ID, drug exposure start time, date time, day supply, and grouping, right? Those are, if they are the same, then it's, um, then they're duplicates. So we remove the duplicates based on these um, criteria. And then from 213,000, we're down to 177,000, okay? So that's another data cleaning step. And then we can see, uh, we just inspected, I uh, just inspect, um, it's a habit. I just inspect um, my data every time I do something so that if something looks off, um, it might, I might be able to see it, right? before I do uh, a lot of things um, later on, which we will do now, okay? Um, so the next is, the next thing is, okay, we removed all the duplicates in this group antidepressant data frame. Now we need to get the trial dates and the trial dosage days, okay? But to do that, we are get, creating a new data frame the antidepressant dates data frame, okay? And 
these are the columns, person ID, AD grouping, and we will just have earliest start one, earliest end one, dosage days one, earliest start two, earliest and um, start end two, dosage days two, and then a third one. Okay. There's a better way of doing this data set, but in order to have one row for for a person ID and AD grouping for this, we need to have one row for this combination, right? We do it this way, right? In order to really create a compliant um, table in SQL, you usually have to have AD grouping and then trial number here, and then just, just this. I will end that here. Okay. That means, and then this one will be the start date, end date, and dosage date. Okay. That is really how you form SQL tables. But this is um, allows us to have a form of the date of the data set that's easier to also visually analyze. Okay, so I won't do that Latin Latin design. Okay. Okay, now I also wanted to make sure that the dates, uh, that the person ID when I inspected, when I did this code before, the person ID was not um, type int. So I just made it a type int. Six, int 64 means nullable. That means that, allow, that particular row allows for null values. Um, but it's just int, it's just int. And then all, all the dates, um, I made sure that they're, they're date time um, data types. So I just look at the earliest. Um, if it contains earliest, then it's a date. Yeah. It's, and then if it contains dosage, I made sure that they're ints. Okay. And inspecting the data, what happened. This one shouldn't be. All right. Um, the last thing that we will do is now calculate the dosage days uh, and the, and the um, antidepressant dates. Okay. This will be uh, this will be very fast, but there will be a teach one that will cover the same thing. Um, Hopefully that person will be able to um, to give you a more a slower a slower um, explanation. But what I did here was that I created a function called calculate dosage days. Okay, um, it will take the row that we are trying to create a, a create uh, a dosage day on, and then the current end date that we're tracking and the current dosage days that we're tracking. And then I just wanted to see the different values of end date and supply. So if you can see here, sometimes the end date is empty and sometimes the days of supply is empty. We need both in order to calculate um, start date, end date, and day supply. So what does what that does is if the start, if the end date is empty, right, and the supply is not is also empty. So in this case, they're both empty, right? That means that that row is a single dose, right? A one-time single dose, right? So dosage dosage date is just one, and the end date is just equal to the start date. Okay? If the end date is not empty, but the day supply is empty, similar to this one. Right. Um, that means that uh, what the, our assumption is that you have a day supply for each day elapsed. Right. End, end date minus start date plus one is the number of days that supply that you have. Okay. So whatever number of days elapse, you have that much su supply. That's an assumption. Okay. If um, there's no there's no example here, but 
Let's see. Is there an example about? No, there's no. So if there's if the end date is empty, but the day supply is not right, there's a supply. Then we will create calculate and um, end date as start date plus day supply minus one minus one day. Yeah. And if all of them are not empty, so so end date is not empty and the day supply is not empty, then we will just retain the end date and then get the day supply, right? So that is, for example, that will give you the example of that I uh, said earlier. For example, I have a, a 30 day January 1 to January 30 um, um, period, but my supply is only 15, right? So my days, my dosage is 15, but my my start date and end date are are January to um, to January 1st to January 31st. Okay, so that's just what this code does. Okay, so it goes into uh, the combinations of end date and day supply, and decides whether what um, what end date to calculate and what dosage date, uh, what number of dose to calculate. Okay, and then. I will go before um, doing this. Um, I will go to my small loop. Okay, so my small loop is for each person that's unique, right? For each unique person, then I will create a smaller data a smaller data set just for that person, um, similar to what we did earlier. This one. Uh, yeah, I deleted that. Similar to what I did earlier. So only the data for that particular person, right? And then pass that to my to process person. So the process person, the, the longer the function above, process does the entire the process for each person. Okay. Processes all the antidepressants that the person has and puts states there. Okay. And then that's the only then that's the only time that I append append uh, to the dates data frame. Okay, and then this is the final data frame that should happen that I'm expecting, right? So person A B group dates and dosage days for three trials. So for the person, okay, I will loop through each. Um, unique antidepressant that that person is taking. Okay. I will create, I will um, track the earliest dates, end dates, uh, the start dates and the end dates. Okay. And then, um, and then sort, um, sort the data in ascending order of dates of um, ex drug exposure start date time. And I'm exploring the data before I saw that um, drug exposure start time is always has a value. So this is a good um, um, column to do your sorting. So I sorted based on the start time and, and then loop through each um, row, through, loop through each row of data for that particular antidepressant, okay, to get the antidepressant dates, okay. So in the loop, okay, we will check first if if it's been more than four weeks from the from the last end date to the current start date, right? If it is, then we have to end the trial. We also end the trial if it's already the last row of the data. Right? If it's the last row, we end the trial. Okay. And then I track trial numbers. So zero is trial one, one is trial two, and then after that is trial three, and then that's the end. Okay. So if it's trial zero, this is the rule. Um, it's it's trial one, this is the rule, and then it's trial if it's the last row or it's trial three, this is the rule, and then we break 
we break the loop. Okay. And then there's, there will also be occurrences where the trial end, the trial end is, all, is um, ha, um, the current end date that I'm tracking is greater than the other end dates and the other dates. Uh, so I just skip those um, un, unneeded rows. Okay? And then once everything has been done there, I will calculate the dosage case. I will call the function above. Right, the one that checks whether the end date or the supplies are is empty, and um, and then create um, that particular row. So all of that code is to create one row, and then we do that seven thousand times. Oh, seven, yeah. Okay, so that's it. Okay, this won't be due until two weeks from now okay i i wanted to um to cover this so that the teach one people will have something to review when they're preparing their teach one they will prepare teach one as well so that you will be prepared when you are actually the ones to have to do it okay so this is where we will end for my lecture Okay, so now I know it's a lot to I know it's a lot um, to take in, right? That's why um, that's why we um, that's why we will do everything twice, right? So next week we'll, we'll have another chance. Okay, now uh, it's eight twenty six in my clock. Let's come back um, 835, 835, so for a bit of a break, right? So we can drink water, um, go to the bathroom. Um, let's come back 835, okay? And by, by 835, um, we will break out into groups and you will do uh, the next assignment, which is what um, Rasil and Mona did. You just have to do it. Um, that's that's the assignment. So, uh, okay. So see you at 8.35. We'll break now. Okay. And I'll stop recording.